Good morning, folks. Stay tuned through the end for a special message. We'll start by reviewing the earthquake watch, starting with two weeks ago before the enhanced watch began. The USGS average of three six-magnitude quakes per week held perfectly. Then, the watch began. We took four six-pointers in just two days, with one ranging at seven magnitude and a downgrade. Luckily, that seems to be just about all the pressure release we needed, especially as the coronal hole that was to be most relevant right now went from major strength as a southern extension to a broken opening that danced between moderate and only low force. Personally, I'm glad it's over. Top news. So there is one scientist who seeks to question the Antarctic sea ice setting record high marks, growing faster than the Arctic is melting up north. It's a major AGW propagandist named Ian Eisenman. Unfortunately for him, he's getting smacked down by just about everyone else, including NASA, who helps derive the data, and who explained that the alleged error was corrected very early, and that the record high sea ice down south is corroborated by numerous agencies. We have a couple good article recommendations, including another example of the model ineptitudes that caused the IPCC projections to fail for 17 years. The models don't work well into the past. Also, we know that we have seen this pause in global warming, and now we know it's completely due to natural forcing, not due to any mitigation efforts of humans. I wonder what that means when we aren't in the natural cooling periods, like for the previous decades. We also have a terrific article on electrical DNA, and also a good new graphic from the Near Earth Observatory on water deficit out west during this mega drought. Tropical storm situation has died down as we're now solely focused on the eastern Pacific development. Perhaps Hawaii will get a watch soon. The main system down under heads over Tasmania now and the earth wind map clearly shows that low right there, matching earth spot to the east. In Europe, the northern Atlantic low is a much less of a factor again today while the low to the east is now creating cloud cover and intermittent storms across a third of the continent. Two lows of note across the pond, one still yanking heat and moisture to the northwest and north central states and the other driving up the eastern seaboard. Luckily that stronger one out east will mostly be effective offshore while the primary warnings will go to the Dakotas, Montana and south central Canada. Let's go to the sunspots. The disc is getting some action again, at least umbrally, if that's a word. Anywho, right now every group is magnetically separated and lacks major flare potential, but I will note the positive spot leading up north there. That's a bit of a change, folks. Nevertheless, the solar flaring's big move barely crept up into sea range, still very quiet. Meanwhile, we appear to have the onset of another very weak coronal hole stream. No geomagnetic effects but the sensitive meters are showing the pressure a tiny bit. Folks, happy birthday to suspiciousobservers.org. We are one year old today. Quickly running through, the observatory project page is open access along with the storms page where we test the Uyen system in real time and the space weather blog run by David Hyde, which is amazing. In terms of premium content on the website, we do an evening news update most of the time. Often it's from Billy's lab or just some minor notes, but usually there is something. The private forums are a no trolls area where the observers converse, ask questions and share links with each other. The fly on the wall discussions are audio uploads only, no video, but we averaged over an hour per week this year and ended up with more than 60 hours of discussion. We also have the special series, Agenda 21 Counter-Strike, the geoengineering page, humans and electromagnetism, which I hope to update soon, the electric earth and sun section, updated just yesterday, and of course, the star water, full series. For dozens of hours of content, we have been charging the small membership fee of either $20 for the year or $3 per month. However, each last week of July, there will be an incentive. We knocked 25% off the already lowered year-long price for 7 days starting now, and you can get the full year and dozens of hours of content for only 15 bucks. You're also helping to support the Mobile Observatory project when you do so. What a terrific first year. Helio viewers still on hiatus, so we'll run the current conditions and the best shots of our star we can manage. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.